Hello, today we're going to talk about photographing the solar eclipse, which is something that I have just recently done for the very first time in my life. So I'm going to share some experiences that I had, what kind of expectations can you have using different equipment, and sort of my story with the partial solar eclipse of November, or was it even October? Yeah, October 2020 here in Europe, in Poland, where I live. So let's get to it. All right, so the solar eclipse uh, was happening a couple of days ago, and unfortunately for me, I only realized about that during a weekend just preceding that day, which was a Tuesday around midday. This is when the solar eclipse happened, and I didn't have any specialized equipment, anything like this, and I was worried that anything I order online might not come in time for me for midday Tuesday. Uh, I found that the cheapest option to photograph and even observe with your own eyes the solar eclipse is using something that is called a Bader ND5 foil. I'm going to put some links down below in the description. This is basically a foil that anybody in like an astronomy uh, shop can uh, sell to you at a different size depending on the size of the telescope that you have or a camera lens or whatever you're using to photograph the solar eclipse. This is fairly cheap. I got like a 20 by 20 centimeters square uh, of this batter uh, foil, solar foil for yeah, four bucks, something like this. So again, really, really cheap. But the challenge was to get it on time and they don't have it locally here in uh, Krakow where I live. So I was thinking about uh, getting into my car and driving like hundreds of kilometers to a nearby city where they had it locally in a store from telescope.pl. If you're in Poland, you probably know them. And luckily I realized that I was browsing their shop and they had this very, very special offer for solar eclipse that you can buy the glasses that you can uh, observe the solar eclipse with and you can buy a pretty expensive but really awesome option for really like express delivery they were guaranteed to deliver these glasses for you on tuesday uh, by 10 a.m and the eclipse was supposed to start at like 11 15 something like that so I thought I can just order the glasses and maybe I can order this batter foil and write to them because they said that this express delivery is only for the glasses and not for some other equipment like telescopes or stuff. So I went, I took a little bit of faith, I ordered the glasses and the ND, and the ND5 batter foil from them and I wrote them that this is also for the solar eclipse. Please, oh please, send it to me so I can get it by Tuesday morning. And this is exactly what they did. They sent it and the courier was actually calling to me on Tuesday morning. I was like... Uh, sir, are you going to be at home at around 2, 2 p.m.? And I was like, uh, I will, but I need it before that. And I specifically paid for a super express delivery to get it by 10 a.m. And I was like, all right, all right, all right, you're right, sir. So I'm going to deliver it by 10. And and luckily he did. Um, when I was walking my dog, uh, I saw the package and I was very excited because uh, that mean, meant that I would be able to capture the solar eclipse. So I needed to do some preparations in order to shoot it uh, using the butterfoil with my telescope. And again, depending on what you are using to photograph the solar eclipse, you will need to do some DIY in order to put this foil basically in front of your glass, whatever you're using to shoot. And I am using the William Optics GT81 telescope. And what's neat about William Optics telescopes is that they have this front cap with a built-in um, button of mask. And I realized that this button of mask could be taken off. There are just three Allen screws that hold the button of mask to the uh, telescope cap. So I took it off. And in place of that, I basically taped in using electrical tape a cutout of the batter foil. Uh, so I, I cut a, like a perfect circle that would fit it and used um, just black electrical tape to hold it in place. And the cool thing about it is that once I put it on the telescope, it's a perfect fit. It's not going to fall off while I slew. And it really worked out really well. So I had it out, I put it onto the telescope and then I realized that we had clouds. Unfortunately, the forecast for the solar eclipse was kind of, you know, partly cloudy, a little bit of rain, a little bit of clear sky. And it was like, nobody was really uh, sure if they're going to capture it or not. But I, I thought I'm going to take my chances anyway. And for the first, like, um, maybe hour of the eclipse, we had, uh, we had partial clouds. So I needed to work my way and kind of figure out what kind of exposure do I really need in order to not overexpose the sun. But if the clouds were covering it, 
it, it, the, the clouds were acting like a natural filter, so they were dimming my image. So it was really challenging to dial in my exposure time in Fire Capture, which is what I was using. I was using my telescope and my deep sky rig, so it was actually quite easy because I just salute to the sun using Stellarium. There's a nice feature in Nina where you can uh, get coordinates from Stellarium. So I just opened Stellarium, I um, clicked on the sun and then I headed to Nina. I clicked this one button which got the coordinates, the celestial coordinates RA and DEC from Stellarium to Nina and then I used this option at the bottom to slew only. Normally the default option is to slew and center or slew center and rotate if you have a rotator like I do. But here I don't want to do any plate solving, I just wanted to slew. And because I was shooting deep sky the night before, I was in pretty good focus already and I had a pretty good uh, sort of star alignment. So just a slew without uh, any additional plate solving should should have got the sun in the field of view and it did, uh, which I was happy about. So I just needed to um, find a good region of interest in fire capture in order to get good uh, FPS readout because the smaller the ROI you pick, the higher FPS you can use to shoot with uh, like a dedicated astronomy camera. I'm using the ZW294MM Pro and it worked out pretty well. I was using the butterfly and I was using the luminance filter in my mono camera. But a problem again were the clouds. So I, I, I was just sitting in front of my computer for like two hours waiting for the clouds to clear for a bit. I recorded a few clips with the clouds, unfortunately. I wasn't able to capture any clip without any clouds. So out of all the clips that I have recorded, which are like, you know, 10, 8, 10 seconds long, I had like 20 clips like this. And I just picked the best frame out of all of those that I could and I tried to edit it um, in post-production. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to do any stacking to pull out any more detail, etc. because with the clouds passing, there's, there's so hard to do any stacking because the images frame to frame are different because of the clouds passing. So yeah, this is what I, this is the final image that I, that I got. I edited uh, it um, using Photoshop. I basically colorized the black and white image out of my mono camera from a single exposure in order to uh, give the sun this yellowish sort of hue that the sun normally has. Um, this is actually a pretty cool way of editing sort of mono images of the sun to look colorized. There's the cool video by Dylan O'Donnell. I will link it down below in the description if you want to see how he does it. Uh, I do it a little bit differently. I can make a follow-up video sometime in the future. Uh, how exactly do I do that if I get some better data? Now, I de now that I have the better ND foil, actually this morning I have captured a full circle of the sun. It was clear. So I'm going to play around with editing my solar images. I'm going to put something on my Instagram. If you're not following me, link down below. And also maybe uh, like a follow-up video on YouTube of how, how I do it and how I edit it in Photoshop to get a color image out of a mono image. Um, so to sum up, this is the image that I got. It's not the best. Uh, as you can see, we have the clouds and also there's not much contrast in the sun itself. And that's sort of, if you saw on social media, the flood of images of the solar eclipse, you can see that some of the images were far better than what I got with way better sort of detail in the and contrast in the sun itself, maybe some solar flares even. Uh, and that's because these images were taken with a dedicated solar telescope. There are a bunch of telescopes, actually a few, on the market. Uh, the most popular one is the Lund, uh, but there are, also, uh, there, there, there are also some other ones that you can pick from and they are designed to shoot the sun only pretty much. They have an HA, very strong filter that you can even adjust in order to pull out different details that you are after. This is something that you will never be able to do with a cheap batter foil in front of maybe even an expensive telescope. So if you're, if you want the best quality images of the sun, you unfortunately need to invest in a solar scope, which is something that I will probably do further down the road. But for now, I'm going to have fun with the batter foil and I'm going to try to pull out some detail. And the cool thing is, yeah, even with the batter foil, I can still see the sunspots. And of course, I have a cool memory of actually shooting the solar eclipse. This is something that I would definitely recommend to anyone. It's so surreal to realize that it's the moon, that it's invisible at that time because it's in the new moon phase and it's covering the sun. And to, to just, just just think about it for a moment. If you, if you look at an image from a partial solar eclipse or a total solar eclipse, eclipse for that matter, just think about it. It is the moon that you normally see in the sky as this wide white orb with craters and stuff. 
and it's invisible but it's covering the sun and it's cutting out this shape uh, of the sun it's it's pretty surreal to, to really think about what's actually happening there so i would definitely recommend to anyone get a cheap butterfoil couple of bucks put it in front of a telephoto lens or a telescope or anything and try it you know try it because i think it's it's worthwhile it's one of the it's a pretty rare event i mean eclipses by themselves uh, happen quite often like maybe i don't know once or twice a year but for it to happen in your location, it's actually quite rare to happen again in your location because for instance, now we're gonna have like a total lunar eclipse in like a week or two, but it's gonna be visible only in like the Pacific Ocean. So I'm not gonna be able to see it in Europe like at all. So look out for eclipses. They are fun to photograph, fun to witness. Just be careful not to you know burn your eyes or your cameras by not using proper filters use proper filters and the funny thing that happened during this session of tr me trying to image the solar eclipse is that I, it actually started raining so i needed to head out to the balcony cover my scope quickly it got a little bit wet but nothing happened everything is working fine so yeah overall very fun experience but just manage your expectations if you don't have a solar scope and you're just using a cheap solar foil you're not going to get the results that people are getting on Instagram using dedicated solar telescopes. But I think it's fun anyway. And if you enjoy that, you can then advance and maybe upgrade to a solar scope if solar astronomy is what you're after. Because I think it's really cool to actually observe. Like the sun, it's, it's really cool because I think like the sun is really dynamic. If you're shooting deep sky um, images of nebulae, they are pretty much static. Everybody is seeing the same stuff. It's just how they process the images. But with the sun, the sun is dynamic. There are new sunspots, there are flares, there are coronal ejections and really cool stuff is happening in the sun. So you can, you can really see how the sun is sort of evolving and, and, and changing day to day, which is, which is fun. In my opinion, so I'm probably going to upgrade to a solar scope one day. All right, that's basically it for me. If you like this video, give it a like. I would definitely appreciate and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. There will be more astronomy related videos in the near future for sure. So yeah, hopefully uh, have some clear skies and enjoy looking up in the night sky. Bye bye.